Welcome to another episode of Adventure Sphere. Today I'll be covering Vanita Ann Mayberry, a woman missing from Fort Worth, Texas. But first, become part of our family by subscribing to our channel, stay up to date by ringing the notification bell, and share our content to help spread awareness of how we help recover missing loved ones free of charge. You never know who may see it, how hurt their heart may be if their family is incomplete, or how you may be a hero to them. The description box has our email address. If you'd like to share insight on any cold case confidentially, know someone missing with a vehicle and would like them featured on our channel and search for, or to donate equipment. The video of Google Earth has a measurement from a starting point theory or known location and goes out to possible search areas. We focus on bodies of water within five miles from home, their last cell phone ping, last known location, and sentimental sites where water is deep enough to hide a vehicle. If an area has been heavily searched, we may expand the search area, but please keep in mind that accidents tend to happen closer to home. There's a few reasons why I'm covering Vanita's case. Her vehicle has been recovered, but there's some other equipment I kind of want to get into. So Vanita Ann Mayberry, then 30, is missing from Fort Worth, Texas. Her last date of contact was Thursday, March 6th, 1997. She was seen at a local diner in the early morning hours. She called a friend and requested a ride home and had cried throughout the conversation. Vanita had some brushes with the law in 1997 and was working to clear her record. Vanita lived in a mobile home in Saginaw, Texas. She had four dogs who were discovered unattended. And a very curious entering is that her TV was found uh, turned on shortly after she disappeared. So somebody had access to her home. I don't know if she lived by herself or had a roommate. If her family might have stopped by. Hard to say. I disappeared. Okay, so I was curious as to how it had been turned on after the disappearance. Um, I do leave my TV on for my dogs when I have to leave them at home. It helps reduce anxiety for dogs and birds. Vanita drives a gray 1989 Honda Excel, Texas license plate GFF06N. Two of the, the databases regarding missing people say she had a Hyundai accent, but those weren't developed until 1994. The Tarrant County Sheriff's Office is investigating her case. They can be reached at 817-884-1213. Her birthday is October 31st, 1966. She would be 56 today. Her family told authorities that she was in good spirits and enjoyed her job. They also said it was uncharacteristic of her to leave her dogs unsupervised. Unsupervised. Uh, Vanita had a cigarette burn on her, so more than likely she suffered from some domestic violence at some point in her life. I did find an article, a news article, that said soapy dishes were in the sink and the TV was on. Uh, her mom, Joanne Nance, had mentioned that. The author said that scarce resources are typically allocated first to murder, then robbery and other confirmed serious crimes before uh, missing people get money invested into their discovery. Vanita's case, family believes her case was given less attention because of her history of severe mental illness, alcoholism, and prostitution. At some point, Vanita's car had mysteriously appeared in a hotel parking lot. It took two months before it could be tested for blood. I had about 90% of my research done for Vanita's episode before I had come across this newspaper article that talked about her vehicle being in the parking lot. If authorities were able to determine the blood was hers, were they able to get a DNA sample of other passengers? Does the hotel have security cameras to see who placed the car there? 
And then did the depositor leave in another vehicle or did they walk away? It might tell us how far we need to look for the person who harmed, harmed her and where she might be hiding at. So as I was saying, I had nearly completed Vanita's case when I learned her car was recovered. I got to wondering how we can find people who are perhaps buried in a shallow grave. How long bones would survive if animals... I need to take a sip of water. Hold on. How long the bones could survive if animals had left them be. All that jazz. Vanita is the sixth or seventh person where I got nearly all of the research done. And then I find out they have a car. And I can't find them. So I thought. Um... I remembered I had come across this article in a scientific journal when I was creating Donnie's YouTube video. The file that the article talked about two proteins being isolated that changed the longer the bones are in water. And then if they were originally in water and then removed and relocated to somewhere else. Then I got to thinking of Jeffrey Tug Carter. His vehicle mysteriously appeared at a motel just like Vanita. If Todd was in the water where his clothes were found and then moved and is on solid ground or in a shallow grave, we could get ground penetrating radar to find bodies without vehicles. It would take an incredibly long and time consuming project, but it could be done. The ground penetrating radar units start around the $20,000 vicinity. If I have, when I get to put the money together, I'm more than willing to either go out and find them myself when we're in the areas or have one of our teammates look for the person as well on land. If you like this episode and haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel, give our video a thumbs up and share the movement with those you influence. Helping with our content uh, sharing and liking and everything helps find Vanita, Todd, Donnie, all these other missing people just from those simple acts. You could also donate equipment and financially sponsor us. You make it possible to offer our services free of charge. I'll let the video play out here for just a couple more minutes so you can see the entire search area. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and remember that we love you. Mm -hmm.